So the peak of the Detroit in terms of population was 1955. Uh, at that point, we were just under 2 million people. Uh, the last census in 2010 uh, put us right around 715,000 people. So that's a decrease of about 60% of population in about six years. So there's many factors that led to that. Uh, a lot of them are systematic and started way before any of this happened. Uh, so there's one law called the Home Rule Act of 1909 uh, that's a statewide law, which effectively makes it impossible for one city to incorporate another. Uh, so for instance, as New York City grew and Chicago grew, they were able to, able to incorporate some of these smaller towns, which Detroit just was not able to do. So if you actually look at a map of Detroit, you'll see that there's two cities inside of the city of Detroit. There's Hamtramck and then also Highland Park. Also, as the city grew out, it was not able to incorporate some of the suburbs that uh, uh, were in the area. So this led to a very fragmented uh, metropolitan area. Uh, Detroit, Metro Detroit now is made up of over 130 municipalities, over half of which are five square miles or smaller. Um, and so that leads to a lot of waste of resources, in my opinion, uh, because you have that's over 130 mayors and city councils and uh, fire and police and school boards and things like that, uh, where if they could aggregate some of those resources, things might be done a lot more efficiently. It also led to uh, Metro Detroit becoming very uh, segregated in terms of racial, racial lines. Uh, so if you look at a city like Livonia, for instance, which is not a small town by a stretch of the imagination, there's uh, right around 100,000 people, but it's 95% uh, white as compared to a city like the, uh, Detroit, which is 700,000 people uh, and 85% black. Um, so yeah, so other factors led uh, to uh, the depopulation, including uh, the, the great, uh, or greatly efficient freeway system that we have here, uh, which allowed people to, even if their jobs were downtown, to live 40 miles outside the city and still make it to their job in a reasonable amount of time. And so eventually, uh, as the people lived out there, the jobs moved out there with them, and then that led just to more and more depopulation. Also, uh, the returning GIs, um, coming back from World War II, they were offered uh, low interest loans to the purchase of homes, but those were not only not offered to African American uh, soldiers, but also those loans could not be used in integrated neighborhoods. So as Detroit became more and more integrated, there was almost a, uh, a financial uh, incentive towards the white soldiers or white uh, uh, people of Detroit moving out to the suburbs. So all of these with a lot of other factors led to the population, depopulation that we have today. Uh, so all in all, uh, Detroit is now left with about 20 square miles of unused land. Uh, for a long time, this was thought as a detriment to the city of Detroit. Uh, but since then, or in more modern days, people are starting to think of it as 20 square miles of opportunity. So it's like, what can we do with this land? So there, you, there's urban farming, there's all sorts of things. Uh, but right now we're in an area uh, that has had a very creative way of using some of this empty land. It's called the Heidelberg Project. So the Heidelberg Project was started back in 1986 by a man named Tyree Guyton. And he grew up in this neighborhood and he noticed a lot of the houses were becoming very blighted and uh, a lot of negative things were happening in the area. Um, and so to call attention to the problems, which are largely being ignored both by the city of Detroit and the neighbors, uh, he started uh, painting polka dots on the street and polka dots on homes. And from there, as you can see, it's grown to a two square block living art space where he takes items from throughout the, uh, he finds throughout the city of Detroit and turns them into works of art. So you've got different things. You've got a lot of abstract things like the clocks and uh, this house right here. And then you have some, some more concrete. One of my favorite pieces is uh, this boat with all the stuffed animals on it. That's actually called Noah's Ark, which is uh, quite apt for this rain that we appear to be getting right now. So, so yeah, so we're starting to see a lot more artists move to the city of Detroit. A lot of them are leaving Brooklyn where the rents have been raised and coming here to uh, uh, find uh, cheaper rents and cheaper space for them to do their art. So this is actually the house that began it all. It's the polka dot house. This was the childhood home of the artist and it's still occupied by his family. So there's another artist that occupies this block. Uh, it's right here. You can see the Detroit Industrial Gallery. That's Timothy Burke. Uh, he's a Vietnam War vet, so a lot of his anti-war and also an addiction counselor. So you'll see a lot of it's anti-drinking and drugs. But in addition to the arts, uh, the Heidelberg Project's now become a nonprofit and they do such things as offering classes to children uh, where they invite them to come help work on uh, different projects, uh, which is especially important these days because with budget cuts at schools, a lot of times one of the first things that gets cut uh, are art programs. Ernst Young actually did an environmental impact on the Heidelberg Project in terms of the economy of Detroit and found that it's contributed $3.5 million to the Detroit economy. Um, 
especially foreign visitors, one of the number one things that gets asked about when they come here is seeing the Heidelberg Project. 